So it's time to look at cycling. Cycling is a fantastic form of exercise, something that I do on a regular basis, and I know my, my two colleagues do as well. So let's start with Nicola. Nicola, tell us, tell us a little bit about your cycling. So I actually don't do much road cycling, but I teach group exercise cycling inside the gym. So it's a bit like road cycling. We take you on a journey and we do flat roads, hill climbs and sprints. So it's the outdoors indoors. What about you, Keith? Well, I love cycling. I mean, I'm, I've been cycling all my life. I find that uh, it's a great way to unwind at the end of the day, go out after a very stressful day and just jump on the, on the road bike. Also, first thing in the morning, before you get started in the day, it's a great way to get woken up and you're close to nature. It's really, really good for being mindfulness. I cycle inside the gym every now and then too, but I just prefer being outside. I love it. Chris, what about you? Well, for me, cycling has been something that I use both for commuting to and from work and also for pleasure. And some of the biggest cycle rides I've done have been for sponsored for charities. I've cycled all the way to, to Brussels and from one side of, of South Africa to the other side of South Africa, all as part of a sponsored cycle ride or, or a road race. So for me, cycling is very, very important. And I think for all three of us, cycling is just an amazing way of keeping fit and staying fit. It's a marvellous way of doing it. So, what I'm going to do now is tell you a little bit about the three different bikes that we're riding. So, Nicola, tell us about your bike. It's very different to my bike and it's very different to Keith's bike, isn't it? It is. This is a multi-terrain bike. So it's really good because it's got low gears. So it's good for hill climbs and it's also known as a mountain bike. So good for the mountains. So it's got low gears. It's got three cogs at the front, hasn't it? That's you can right, see the yeah. three cogs. So that means that you can have a very, very low gear which means you can actually rotate the pedals quite quickly for a slow rotation of the wheels. Absolutely, Which yeah. means you can go up uphill very fast. But it's not ideal for riding on roads, is it? No, not ideal for roads, but great for cross-country. Right. Now, I've got the opposite kind of bike, if you like, because mine's a road bike. Although, many years ago, they were called racers. But these days are called road bikes, characterised by the, the droop handlebars and also by the thin tyres. I've got far fewer gears, but the gears I have go much higher than the gears on Nicola's bike. So I can go actually much faster on this bike because it's designed for road use. So this is a road bike and it's very common at the moment. It's the kind of bike you see on road races. So when you see the Tour de France or cycling on velodromes, this is the kind of bike you see, a road bike like this. Now Keith, your bike is something different again. Yeah, what I've got is a hybrid, which is kind of a blend. It's a lovely blend between the both bikes. It's a mix between a road bike and a mountain bike. And I just prefer it because you get the best of both worlds. So you've got a fantastic choice of different bikes here. So Keith, you're, you're probably the most expert cyclist amongst the three of us. Uh -huh. Of these three types of bike, what do you recommend the average person should get in order to get fit? I would say to start off with the hybrid because then you've got like, you're, you're basically you're, you're learning about both at the same time. Um, the road bike is a little bit too, the, th the tyres are so thin that you've got to work, the, work a lot harder with the balance. You certainly do, yeah. And uh, how about Nicola? Would you recommend a mountain bike for a beginner? Yeah, absolutely. Something that you can take out on different types of road. There we go. So there you go. So that's it. Three different types of bikes. We've got three different types of cycling. But I think we all agree, guys. It's great exercise. Yeah? Absolutely. Yes. The best form of exercise. Love it. I do a lot of cycling. And my question is, what's the best nutrition before and after a cycle ride? Cycling nutrition is a very individual thing. But one thing to keep in mind is just keep it nice and light before you go out on the bike. Have a source of carbohydrate and a source of protein. Try and limit the amount of fats because it's going to take a little bit longer to digest. And after your workout on the bike, have a more complete meal. So a carbohydrate once again and your protein, which could be basically fish and pasta or fish and rice, whichever you fancy. And just keep it simple. But make sure you do eat beforehand and afterwards and you'll be good to go. Welcome to the Fit Happens Kitchen. I'm with my good friend Dion, and we're gonna be cooking today chicken and chips. Now, chicken and chips, Dion, you like a bit of a takeaway, don't you, every now and then? Yeah, I do. And I also have a teenager, and she likes to have chicken and chips, as most teenagers do. So, mostly chicken and chips are, you know, takeaway, not so healthy. So today we're gonna to make the healthy version. Okay. You up for that? Definitely. Wanna help me out? Definitely, let's get going. Okay, so for the chips, we're gonna use sweet potato, why sweet potato? 
Sweet potato is a lot more healthier than white potato. The reason being that the, they release energies quite slowly. Okay. So you don't have the big spikes in insulin in your blood levels and therefore you have slow release energy throughout the day. Excellent. All right. They're also filled with vitamin D, which is something that makes you happy. So what I've done here is cut some sweet potatoes up. So nice thin slices so that they cook all evenly. And the reason why we're soaking them so that they go nice and crispy later. So these have been soaking for about 45 minutes, so we're going to dry them off. Do you want to dry these for me? Yeah, sure. So whilst Dion's drying off the chips, what we're going to do is make the coating for them. So once they're dry, they're going to be put in a bag with corn flour, and we're going to shake up the bag just so that they go nice and crispy in the oven. So inside the bag with corn flour, we're going to use a little bit of garlic powder for some flavouring. Salt and pepper if you want to add that later, just so that it doesn't do anything to the texture of your chips. And obviously it's just taste required if you want to. We're going to cook them around guest mark 5 for about 30 minutes. If you can turn them halfway, that would be perfect. Okay. So your chips... We're going to cook the chips on a baking tray lined with foil and what we're going to do is use a light spray of oil. So you can put that on the tray. So now for the chicken. So chicken that you normally get from the takeaway has the bones on so it's up to you if you want to have the bones on or not but we've removed the skin so the skin adds extra fat and extra calories so to make it a little bit more healthier we've taken the skin off. So here's our washed chicken. For the chicken, we're going to make a wet coating and a dry coating. So we want to do the crunchy fried chicken that you normally get from the takeaway. So for the wet coating, we're going to have half a cup of yogurt. So Dion, have you ever had healthy chicken and chips before? Uh, meh. Full fat all the way. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to add some chia seeds. Now, chia seeds are a superfood. They're really good for you. Full of antioxidants. A little bit of coconut oil as well. And again, the garlic powder. So just taste up to you if you want to have more or less of the garlic powder. Okay, so in goes the chicken. So we're going to coat the chicken in the wet ingredients and then we're going to roll it into the dry ingredients. So I'm just going to make those now. The dry ingredients, we have cornflakes. Now you wouldn't imagine cornflakes would be healthy, but these are organic, they're also gluten free and they just add a little bit of crunch instead of using breadcrumbs. One cup of cornflakes into the blender with half a cup of oats. So these are gluten free organic oats. You can add a little bit more of the garlic powder. So you don't need to blend them too much because what we want is to have a little bit of crunch. So you're basically making another version of breadcrumbs. Now that's ready, I'm going to put it into a bowl and we're going to soak the chicken in the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and then ready for the oven. Okay, so make sure you coat the chicken with all of the yogurt ingredients. And we're going to use this grill on the top. So that way the chicken gets crispy all the way round and not soggy at the bottom. Okay, time for messy fingers. So coat the chicken. There we go. So the calories in this are about half the calories that you're saving here with um, making your own compared to buying a takeaway. All right, so we're ready for the oven. We're gonna let the chicken and the chips cook in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. And just make sure that your chicken is cooked all the way through. So Dion, we're all ready, it's cooked. At long we're last. We're to try. Oh, you yes. dig in first. It's been smelling good, hasn't it? I've been waiting for this. I wanna hear the verdict. Crunchy. Crunchy. 
Hot, greasy. I think that's really good. Yeah? All right. Yeah, definitely. Um, something I'd definitely try. Brilliant. And make myself. It's so easy because you could just make them, have it all prepared, yep. put it in the freezer, and then just get them out whenever you need to. Mm. So, quick, easy meal. So, there you go. That's how you make your healthy chicken and chips. Well, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. We're all off for a 5k run, and we'll see you next time.